Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, Spirited Conversations with Interesting People. I'm your host, Christopher Hart. Today is an episode that I have been trying to make happen for a year, for this entire 2018. Uh, I have known David Allardyce and Daniel's story for a couple years now. They've been a big part of the Whiskey Social, uh, the festival that I host locally, as well as the whiskey scene. I mean, she's the Southeast District Manager for the brand, and David Allardyce basically handles the – is it is the Bible Belt going north to south? Is it is it basically Texas to whatever's above Texas? <laughs> <laughs> so he handles that middle tornado alley, you know, Chicago, Texas, Oklahoma. Um, he's from Scotland. He's a DJ. He also goes by DJ Dave Paradise. Um, he has, uh, he's phenomenal. Uh, I've been trying to get him on the show forever. So uh, I'm a big fan of the brand. This brand is one of the brands that holds a place in my heart in regards to my wife. I've talked to you all about the Balvenie marriage bottle that I have, but Glenfiddich 18 was one of the first scotches I've had that basically, basically tasted like Christmas. It was, it was uh, everything I wanted and didn't know that scotch could taste like uh, that was not peated. So um, Glenfiddich has, has made a massive impression in our house. Huge fan of the brand, and they cover everything from the $35 range to, to the sky's the limit. Um, so it, I was excited to have them on. They've got a new bottle out called Fire and Cane. Fire and Cane is part of their experimental series, and it is uh, lightly peated, finished in rum barrels, and out of this world delicious. A uh, couple things. The Whiskey Social tickets are on sale now. It's set for March 30th. We are now, uh, I guess, three months away, something like that. A little less than three months, a little more than three months away. And you can find those tickets at HoustonWhiskeySocial.com. It's also on Facebook, The Houston Whiskey Social. Uh, this event is our fourth event. We, we see something like 400 whiskeys a year, and it's just... Um, it's incredible. So definitely check it out at HoustonWhiskeySocial.com or Facebook and, and, and get your tickets while you can at Eventbrite. Without further ado, uh, Daniel Story and David Allardyce with Glenn Fittick. Cheers. Thank you so much for being here. We're definitely live. We're definitely recording. Thanks for having, Thanks us. For having us. I'm it's excited. Good to be here in Houston, H-Town. Yeah. I was only here a few days ago. Yeah, I I follow your social media presence. You you seem to not stop. You and Wingo both seems to just do you sleep or <laughs> I sleep. How are you I not didn't. grumpy all the time? I sleep well. I sleep lots. I was actually talking to someone about this last night. It says, Yeah, I usually get nine hours of sleep. That's my optimum amount. A day? A week. Not every day, but that when I get the nine hours, I feel like I wake up rested. Oh. But it doesn't happen. Like last night I got two and a half. Oh, that's rough. What time was your yeah. flight? So we needed the lights to light up. My soul. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired from last night. Yeah, we had a we had a bar crawl last night in Austin, and then we finished up by going to see Gary Clark Jr. Okay, are you familiar? I'm no? very familiar yeah. with, with the greatness that is yeah. Gary Clark. Jr. I was not, and uh, oh, he's amazing. It was tremendous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't go to see a lot of bands. I'm more into and, and you listen to him in Austin, which is like the perfect. It was, yeah, it was, it was really cool. The, the yeah. perfect uh, atmosphere for a Gary Clark Jr. concert. Yeah, it was it was pretty mind blowing. But yeah. It was a late night. Another late night. What were you all sipping you, on? What were we sipping on? Uh, Is that a tea? Just we, tea we actually went through a couple of places, had flights. We did a, it was a flight with 14 Fire and Cane Winter Storm. We were sipping highballs. What? You know? Well, let's definitely. I, I want to jump on Fire and Cane. I know the last time we had. Uh, um, Kelsey and Charlotte. Right. But I every time I say her name, I can't help but. W- Try to say it with a Scottish accent because McKechnie just McKechnie, sounds. McKechnie, yeah. So, um, but you guys talked about uh, Fistful of Bourbon. We briefly, for a, a, a moment, talked about Fire and Cane, and I think later that day was the launch that we did locally, or the next day. It w- yeah, it was a couple weeks later. We did the actual like market launch. We did the press launch. Okay. That night. Okay, I see. Okay, mm-hmm. so the the press launch, but um, it has been such an overwhelmingly positive. Let's try that again. A, an overwhelmingly uh, well-received release, and it's you're talking about a sub fifty single malt scotch that's got uh, you know, if you're a Pete fan at all, I mean Pete, and then of course that that sweetness from the rum barrels. I've I know about it, but tell me a little bit about the fire and cane. 
Yeah, I mean, the elevator pitch is that it's a slightly peated Glenfiddich finished in rum casks for four months. That's that's the that's the very broad strokes description of it. Great sound. I love that. I remember that from last time. Mm-hmm. You Put it right in the mic. Got to capture yeah. that. And it's just beautifully done. I've got to be careful because I have a heavy pour. Just go easy on us. Still, you you flew in this morning. Uh, I did. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was trying to get the bus. I was trying to get the Vaughn Lane. That's my new favorite way to get around Texas. Awesome. What's it called? Vaughn Lane. Is that a, a? It's like an executive type five star like you know, luxury bus, bus service. I didn't know if we had that. Yeah, it's really cool. Vaughn Lane, Lane two, Vaughn two. Lane, one <laughs> word, and it goes. You can get from Houston to Dallas or Austin. That's a fun. Don't know if you can go to San Antonio. You can. You can. Mm-hmm. Um, You've done it. They, they haven't got it. Austin from San Antonio yet because that's super short, but. Yeah. Great service. Yeah. No Three hour seats. bus ride? Yeah, and it beats, you know, you don't have any of the, the nonsense with the airports and you know free um, Wi Fi so you can work. Do yeah. some expenses. Yeah, or you can work or you can sleep if you only yeah, got I mean. two hours of sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Von Lane wasn't gonna get me here in time, so we got a we got a little flight. A little hop. A little hop from Austin. Yeah. That's gotta be rough. Yep. So Fire and Kane, you're sipping it. My glass is empty. Thanks a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she said she had to go live. I actually course. told her earlier. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, I was like I'm not really excited about drinking right now. <laughs> You're like, I don't um, want scotch to touch my lips. You've got to, uh, uh, so I, you know, this, this hobby slash job thing that has, has definitely increased the amount I've consumed um, <laughs> before bed, lots of water and some, and ibuprofen. And uh, I feel pretty sprightly. I don't, yeah. I don't know how great that is on your liver and or stomach, but yeah, it um, rejuvenates itself. But I, <laughs> I, I usually am feeling pretty okay to, and I've, I've done a lot of these like 10 a.m. shows where we have to drink at 10 a.m. We, we got two today, so Will Stragus will be here, um, which you guys won't see till next week. But um, it's this, you just got to find a way to like keep the gears turning. Keep, we'll find a keep way. Keep them oiled. Find a way. Well, cheers. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having us. So it's um, it's lightly peated. The breakdown of, of how we actually put this together or how Brian uh, and the team put it together is uh, taking some heavily peated malt, running that through our stills, uh, running through that through production for about uh, a week. We do that typically every year, once a year, and we collect that spirit. We put it into casks. Affectionately known as? New make spirit. Um, I was going to say peat week. Right? Is that um, not the same? No, we don't. The, Balveni has a thing called yeah. Pete Week. Right, the expression's called Pete it's Week, similar. but isn't it re- a reference to that week, that one week a year where you guys run yeah. Pete Distillate? We we don't really refer to it specifically as that, but yes, it's, I guess you could say that. Um comes from the same week. It's something that we did since, uh, and I just found this out recently, We, I think Ian Miller uh, used to run a distillery, and I think it was it was Ian that put that practice in at Glenfiddich, where he says, let's let's see what happens <laughs> if we actually run peated malt um, through the production process. So the the barley is peated uh, about 50 to 60 parts per million uh, at the start of the process. And then by the time we get um, through the stills or after second distillation, it's down to around about, um, I think it's around about nine or 10. It's really light. And then what we do is we actually blend uh, 60% of the peated malt with traditional unpeated Glenfiddich. So we bring that down even further down to even about lower. six, five or six parts per million. It's got a little on the nose, but it really comes out when you on the, on the, on the finish, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it was very well received. I know uh, a few people... I really, you know, with the new era of uh, no age stated whiskeys, there's um, been a big push, and, and I'm going to blow a little smoke up your bums for now, <laughs> but uh, Glenfiddich specifically, you guys have been on this trend of making very approachable, and I, I say introductory, not in the sense that it is a, a rookie expression, but that it is, uh, for, for ever since the 14 came out, right. someone says, I'm a bourbon drinker, I want a single malt, I always say Glenfiddich. Uh, 14 bourbon barrel reserve uh you guys are on this this trend of like very approachable very affordable uh and then of course diverse the the entire line from the ipa cask the the is it called the xx or the 20 i always i say project 20 (laughs) it says project xx but it actually stands for 20 right i knew it stood for 20 on there so they didn't want people to think there was a 20 year which statement yeah, Wade, if you're listening, <laughs> um, there's there's those people who have issues with the deceptive uh, numbers. 
the great idea. So, right. anyways, my point is, is that the the entire series right now, except for the twenty one, uh, is you know what forty five bucks. I mean, the I think the uh, Fire and Canes the least expensive I've seen so far. I was really surprised at how yeah. how inexpensive it is, and it's right. awesome. I mean, lightly peated. So if you're even a rem- if you like Lafroy, but it's a little too intense, too much, yeah. Um, th- this is a great. It's a great dram. I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. Yeah, I, think, I mean, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the innovation line did a really good job of <laughs> recruiting new drinkers. People that are like, oh, I don't like scotch because they think the traditional scotch is really peaty. I think this did a really good job of pulling those IPA drinkers in and those people that are looking for something new. Well, and, and even the the design, like with Fire and Cane and the, the artwork done with the new series – Reminds me a hundred percent of David Allardyce. I mean the the, the look the look of the the. Well, it's the shoes that I bought. <laughs> it's the high tops. Everybody saw those. The 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 graphics remind me of your entire your image. You know the the DJ Paradise. I mean just the the for those who don't know, <laughs> David Allardyce is also a uh, musician, a, a creator of music, and. Uh, I wish I had Trevor's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. So, anyways, it's, yeah, very, it's so very good. It is. It's, um, this is number four in experimental series. We started off with the IPA cask, which was uh, a bourbon cask, aged Glenfiddich, um, finished in IPA casks. That was a partnership that we created with a, a local brewery in Scotland. So it was kind of a an interesting. It was truly an experiment. We took a long time to get to the final product. A lot of testing. Um, but they got there or something that was a little bit more on the mellow side, um, and it only had that. It's kind of similar for me with the fine cane, where the smoke just comes through at the very end. The IPA, the sort of multi beer quality, comes through at the end on the IPA cask. Number two, we decided to do something a collaboration with uh, all the brand ambassadors. So Project Twenty was twenty brand ambassadors that were led into warehouse number two, and we were then to pick six casks each. We put our, our initials on each cask. We then got samples of each cast the we? next day. Were you part of this? Yeah, I was part of that. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. This was, thumbprints on there. This was... Um, that's a really thumbprint? Mm-hmm. That's his thumbprint? Well, it's, isn't it all... It's an amalgamation. Else? We all gave our thumbprints. Oh, I see. We all gave our tasting notes and everything. So we se- selected six casks each. Wait, uh, when you did this, did you know what y'all were going to do with no, them? Did he, Brian we didn't, didn't we didn't know. We thought... Kinsman, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Brian yeah. Kinsman is the malt master, and he was um, with us through this pros- process, this project. Um, we actually thought we were just going to get some some bottles sure. for sampling for our, our own events, you know. And then somewhere along the lines, once we selected all these casks, they decided this was going to be a, a release. And um, <laughs> it came out and you had whiskies right the way through from, from bourbon casks, sherry casks, and you had uh, there was actually one port cask, uh, which Beth up in Canada, she picked the port pipe, uh, the famous port pipe. And it was just a... A marriage of those different barrels selected from the different brand ambassadors from all around the world. So you had all different types of palettes that, that came together to put this in. Um, and because it was by us, you know, we wanted it to be a little bit higher strength. Because sure. we understand the audience that we, are, we get in front of quite often like a little bit higher strength. Also, uh, we asked that it would be non-chill filtered, which... Um, you know, I'm sure most people that listen to this show are, are familiar with that term, but typically chill filtration is something that is done across the board, but uh, it supposedly can remove a little bit of the oily character. Um, the mouthfeel. Yeah, a little bit texture. of that mouthfeel can, can go with that, but um, you know, 99.9% of whiskies go through that process. It's, it's pretty rare that you get whiskies that are non-chill filtered these days, and coming from Scotland. A hundred percent. I mean, there's uh, I, there's there's three things I always tell people uh, on this show that I actually I borrowed from Ralphie for the for anyone who who's watched Ralphie's reviews on YouTube. He was in uh, Whiskey Sponge recently. Did you see it? No. What's Whiskey Sponge? Oh, oh, excellent. I'm glad we've uncovered this here. Yeah. It's a tremendous blog. Uh, I don't actually know the guys who do it. They keep themselves fairly low profile in terms of you know revealing their. Um, oh, their so they're like the WikiLeaks of the whiskey world. <laughs> That's Could be, yeah. Good way to uh, say it. And the the and the, Ralphie was in there. Ralphie's in the <laughs> most recent post. And what and what about? You'll have to go and check it. Oh, out. it kills <laughs> me. It's about a really well known Scotch whiskey brand and um, their been... new marketing campaign. Okay, all right. I've, this is going to kill me. I know we've got a break, a break coming up. I'll check it out on yeah. our break. But uh, it's it's very entertaining. Um, so the. 
my point with Ralphie was that he had always uh, three indicators that uh, before you ever taste a spirit is a sign of a little bit extra effort put into what goes in the bottle and that non-chill filtered, a bump in proof from 80 proof. Anytime you see a brand that even goes to 43%, they're obviously trying to, to get the right flavor into the bottle as opposed to just taking the maximum profits mm -hmm. and, and cutting it down to 80 proof standard without yeah. any care as to what it tastes like. Uh, and then the other thing is um, no added color, which uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I have no issue with uh, caramel coloring being added, but um, non-chill filtered, bump and proof. So he's very like dogmatic about his mm -hmm. feelings on things. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's it was great for me when I first got into spirits because I got to learn a lot about it. But now uh, I'm afraid you're going to tell me he got Neil deGrasse Tyson or something, and <laughs> and I, I'm going to go look in in the post <laughs> and find out what happened. But yeah, it wasn't that bad. Whiskey sponge. Whiskey sponge. Yeah. yeah. So it's a blog and a newsletter that comes out <clears throat> interesting monthly almost. Yeah. What barrel did you pick out of the Project 20? Uh, it was a bourbon cask. Um, funny story about that, actually. Out of the six casks that I had in front of me, the six samples, I, I picked two as my favourites. The first one being a sherry cask. It was it was quite a bit older than the bourbon cask I chose. The bourbon cask was actually really young. And uh, Brian comes round. I said, he was he was basically nosing everyone's top pick, and he came round to mine, and he picked up the first class. Did you feel like your job was on the line? I felt like I was a... I was a Potentially about to be ridiculed by the whole room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would imagine and if your if the <laughs> boss's boss's boss is going through and, and saying what you like, and if you picked out something horrible, he'd be like, "Okay, this guy cannot it, represent us." It, it was it was a tremendous learning experience because he picks up this cask, this uh, sherry cask, and he barely even puts it to his nose. And he's like, mm. oh, "I said that's not a good face." <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Says, ah, it says, it's, 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 "I think it's burnt." I'm getting burnt notes i'm like mm, guessing burnt's not good on this occasion mm -hmm. um so we put that to the side and i, I reassessed it and i was like I, I started to see what he was talking about but to me it was I, I thought it was interesting sure um so we moved on to the bourbon cask and it was it was really interesting to me just to see how a very very young whiskey can be so flavorful and we've also sampled very very old whiskeys that are not so great yeah um so it was more of a just kind of a novelty for me that it was such a young whiskey, but it was so good. Sure. And I thought that's going to be my pick. That's that's one of the things I um, have always enjoyed going through. I think if you kind of are raised in your whiskey experience only drinking, let's say, I'm just going to throw a brand out there, early times, you know, my dad only drank Jim B. White Label, whatever. Uh, I think it really limits your, your comfort zone. It's like food. I want to try sushi the full spectrum of sushi and, you know, Tex-Mex is great. And um, going through and being able to enjoy everything from sherry. That's what I think scotch is more dynamic than bourbon. Bourbon almost always carries the same classic notes, but scotch, you can go full spectrum of sherry to peat to to just that ex-bourbon where it's kind of like just that honeyed sweetness that the Highlands are known for. Uh, it's it's I think it's what people – it's like when you first learn to drive, you should learn to drive stick. I think you should start with scotch and then maybe move over to bourbon as opposed to the other way around. But uh, that's just my I, thoughts I on it. I don't disagree. Oh, it smells great. You got Good it. Good job. That was, that was a little different. You know, was, there's some, some grit to it. A little extra. It sounded like a little remix, quirk remix. Paradise. I could be your side DJ. Let's sample that. We'll make it a hit. <laughs> Actually, speaking of sampling it, I thought about putting you on the spot on air and helping me do our new intro song to the show. <gasps> Would love to. I there mean, I didn't go. come dressed like this for nothing. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to do it right this moment, but like well, we've well, got we've got like well, a, well, we're here. We've got like an opening banjo type thing. Yeah. And I've never been 100 percent sold on it. And then I saw someone online saying that all these whiskey podcasts all use like stereotypical banjo music. And I was like, oh, oh. oh <laughs> shit. So uh, we can say shit still, right? Um, what we'll do is, uh, yeah, let me know. Just like a little, what is it, like 10 seconds? How long is our intro? It's uh, a little shorter than that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, just like a little, it, something it's out. a little cut from the introduction to the beginning of this conversation where we talk about high tops and, and sleeping. Love it. I feel like your wheels um, are turning. My wheels are always turning, Daniel, when I'm with you. <laughs> um, oh, that honeyed sweetness is in, uh, incredible. That's really, what's the proof on that? 47. I don't remember it being that high. Percent. Mm. <laughs> I'm a fan. Plus, it's got the, the, the look and feel of these bottles are incredible. 
yeah, they did a nice job on the packaging. Um, but yeah, Project 20 was number two. Uh, it's available in the US. It's available in a lot of countries. Um, but it's possibly going to stay around. We're not quite sure yet. Trying um, to recreate it? Like, is there going to be like a, well, a, basically a the, remix the, edition and then it'll be like the, another the, six barrels? The, tw- the initial 20, 20 uh, <laughs> barrels were used to make the blueprint for it. Okay. Know? So the same way that any distillery will have a blueprint for their or 12. Any, any part of the range. Um because, you know, the casks are non-repeatable. They're always slightly different. So same with this. We set the blueprint. As long as they're not burnt, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we'll be good with that. And then, um, yeah, we we came out with number three, which was a limited edition at Winter Storm. Yeah, and that, that uh, was recently re- reintroduced to the market, I think. That's number two. Because uh, I, I couldn't get my hands, and I was really uh, uh, not fuming, but very sad that you I couldn't. You can hold it for I, now. I, well, I own three <laughs> bottles now. So it's, when, when it came out again, I jumped all over it. Um, when it first got here, it seemed to have come and gone before I even saw it was here. So Yeah, it went re- really quickly. But um, I've noticed it on some, a few shelves, so it's still out there. I bought this one yesterday. The so. first bottle I got was from Telemontes. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He... Uh, he had an extra bottle or something, and I was like, dude, I've been dying to get my hands on this, and he hooked me up. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, Tamales is a good guy. Is that yeah. what you call him? Tamales, yeah. There's a couple different ones. A we'll C- couple of names that yeah. don't rhyme with his last name. Yeah. We'll talk about that off air. <laughs> yeah, ice wine uh, is not something I'm super familiar with, but uh, I was in Canada recently, purchased a few bottles um, from the Peller Estates, which is who we partnered with for this uh, particular one. And we we ended up taking, uh, I think we got, oops, losing some bits and bits here. Light down. Uh, we, I think we got six casks in order to do the, the finishing um, for the winter storm. Um, well, I think we got more than six casks, but that was like the initial. Sure. And um, basically what we did was we aged, 21 years in bourbon casks. And then we put it into the ice wine cask for about four or five months. Do you know if they were first fill? Uh, n- not specified. So probably a combination of first and second. Um, the 19-year-old, which is back, the the bottle on the end there. I'm really glad you brought that back, by the way. That's specifically first you fill. Specifically. Well, it never really went away. It went to Global Travel Retail, yeah. and then we brought it back. Yeah, into the and it's, it's going to be phased out. But there's a small batch of it coming back to the U.S. I think it just landed yeah. recently. So the 19-year-old, um, perfect timing for Christmas or the holidays. And the box is beautiful. Um, yeah, so that's a first fill. But nothing else that is on the table is specifically, exclusively first fill. It's blended to profile, right? That yeah. would be the, the way to put that. Mm, this is fantastic. I, I haven't had the... Uh, the tw- Project 20 in quite some time, uh, what was, except when it first came out. And I don't remember it being so, uh, the high proof, I mean, just really, um, it's very sweet. I- I'm a huge fan. Yep. Did a great job with that. Um, <clears throat> Again, it was so. like 50 bucks. I mean, it's right. the, the price is ridiculously cheap. What did y'all do with the rest of the barrels? Like, cause didn't you each pick six? Yeah, we basically got samples of each. Oh, cool. That's all that happened, basically. We weren't allowed to pick um, the same cast as anyone else, so we got the samples, and then that was that. We didn't we didn't get the get to go home with the casks or anything. Roll it on now. Have you? And I know this is so cheesy and stupid, and I'm sure it's been recommended, but have you uh, ever thought about taking a couple of barrels and making a, a custom setup for your DJ remixing? What would be the non we actually irritating way to say that? We actually. Um, we did a gig at the distillery. I think it was two years ago now. Pretty sure we we're the first people to ever do a, a gig at the Glenfreak Distillery, or probably any Scotch whiskey distillery. But um, yeah, when you say uh, gig, you were like DJing. And yeah, stuff. Jez. Jez is our South African um, ambassador, so he DJs too, similar style of music. And uh, we we got Struan to help us set it up. Struan's a global ambassador now, and uh, yeah, we got. I think we got three. Empty barrels, yeah. which had all the decks set up on them outside the patio, right by um, one of the warehouses at the distillery. And we, we played a little set. We had a barbecue. It was amazing. That sounds amazing. Barbecue in Scotland. We had a barbecue. It was raining. It's probably it actually was raining, uh, but we had a barbecue. We had tarps. 
You, you always talk about the rain, but every time I've gone to Scotland, it's always it's been, been beautiful, beautiful and sunny, gorgeous. and they're like, you'll never get a better day than this. Sunshine just falls all around. Oh. I actually... <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what happens when you live with Matthias. <laughs> yeah, just compliments <laughs> all the time. I went... Uh, I've only been during the winter, and it was just the most gloomy. We took the Harry Potter train, and, you know, through... Was it Fort William or something? And basically on the western side of Scotland, there's this gorgeous train that goes over the... Is it really called the Harry Potter train? No, it's oh. called. It's got a name for it. But if you if you were a fan of the Harry Potter films, the train that they took, the Hogwarts Express, specifically drove through the hillside of Scotland, and it's a uh, I want to say the Glenfiddich Viaduct, but it's not. It's it's the there's a viaduct. It, basically, it's like this gorgeous bridge that goes through the hillside of Scotland, uh, and it's just a short run from like Loch Ness to Fort William. And um, I'm probably horribly butchering this, but the imagery, the scenery you see from the film is from this part in Scotland. So, of course, we had to ride the train. And yeah. we went and we got like the boxcar and we took some chocolates with us. And my wife's a huge Harry Potter fan. And <clears throat> I am too, but not to the extent that I needed to go to a, a train. Uh, but <laughs> but it was just, it was the fall and it was just, everything was brown and, and cold. And, and Scotland's the only place I've been to where it's, my ears are constantly popping because oh, the, yeah. the hill country, or not the hill country, the highlands are just up. You heard that? Just mm -hmm. up and down all over the place. So you just, you know. Yeah. Did you changing. get to visit the distillery? Um, so we visited the Glenfiddich distillery, which is by far the most uh, modernized, like really great looking aesthetic. You know, it's you go to uh, Bardstown in Kentucky and it's it's an old textile factory. Like it just, it's, Glenfiddich's a gorgeous, we tried to go to Balvini or Balvenie, but it was... <laughs> Uh, by appointment only, and we didn't know that. So we're like literally looking in the gift shop window trying to get in, but uh, we found out later that it was by appointment only, but we didn't get to give the whole thing. But I did get a, a hand-filled bottle from the gift shop, and first time I saw the Glenfiddich 40 was in the gift shop. Um, and I've since had it at Federal. Yep, back 40 years. Peter was there. Yeah. Good old Peter. I thought about having him on when you were here today. I was out. We should have got him on. I was out with him uh, on Sunday. He'll be here there tonight. Cool. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to be going visiting a few bars tonight. So this is a nice little warm-up for us. Thanks a lot, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's uh, fantastic. Every time I try that, we're trying to milk it because it's one of those things that you're not going to find it every day like you can the other stuff. Which, by the way, are, are you guys going to stop the series at one point, or is this an indefinite series? Uh, the experimental series is, is an ongoing thing. It's um, the only one that we've made so far that is not ongoing is the winter storm, and that's just down to the nature of uh, the difficulty of getting those casks um, from from the ice wine producers. We decided that was a one and done. Sure. Um, Fire and cane number four, and then there will be something new coming out next year. Uh, you can't tell me. I genuinely don't know. Um, you know, I see. There's, no, there's, 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 there's I actually. There, I do know something that's coming out. Um, I obviously can't talk about it, but I do know one product that's coming out. But there's, there will be some an additional <laughs> experimental coming out next year. I, I'm checking the Cola website while you talk. Yeah. What is it? The so the label oh. approval website. Oh. I, I had <laughs> sneaky. Uh, which, by the way, I looked up the Ralphie thing. It's very bizarre. I encourage you to check it out. Go to Ralphie's YouTube page. Is that my phone or yours? Oh, I hope it's not mine. Yeah, we've had some issues with people finding labels before the, the the news is out. Yeah, I'm sure you can't talk about it if there is something on here, but I'll just I'll know. It won't be. It you'll won't, see that it, I know. It won't, but you be, won't, it won't know. be there because it's not that far along yet. Yeah, that was like when Fistful was coming out. People were finding the label. I was like, dang. Oh yeah, yeah. Good news travels fast. People are thirsty for <laughs> thirsty, thirsty for, for the breaking news. People want to know. People want to know. We uh, yeah, we had Glenfiddich uh, or. Uh, uh, Glenn Morangy, uh, Brendan McCarran, if you've ever met him, he is all personality. I mean, crazy personality. Um, we actually we actually got into a bit of controversy. That The, the great thing about doing the show pre-recorded is anything can be removed. So uh, if something is said, that, that probably shouldn't make it to there. <laughs> so Brendan, being the great man that he is, um, oh, nah, that can't be right. Let I me see. I, <laughs> I, I want to see what you. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, but so. How did you get that so quickly? Uh, it's, it's in my favorites. Um, so, so for those who can't see, so that says Snow Phoenix, but if you look here, that CA means that someone re-imported it to put into a restaurant in California. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one there, 
Experiment one. Yeah, well, I didn't say it. You did. Just one. Experiment what? It says experiment one. Oh. Which was the IPA? Uh, no. Uh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. All right, you win this one. I'll I'm let you guys know this. in a few months. This what is, is this? This is oh, yeah. new, but it's not new. Okay, hold on. I I've not. I've never actually had it. I had the the Madeira. Was it the I actually Red just found a bottle of that in where was I? Um, either I think it was Grand Caymans or Belize or somewhere. Um, and I walked in and there. You know, one of these far off places <laughs> that yeah. just <laughs> just happened to visit just, on a yeah, Tuesday. Just picking up. Well, actually, was a Tuesday. <laughs> Funny you say that. Hmm. And I found I'm a bottle. Definitely of the not Madeira. stalking you. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Madeira. Yeah, that one I've had. Um, big fan. Uh, and this is the blue box, right? The yeah. Yeah. bourbon. It's uh, first fill bourbon casks the whole way. There's no fancy finishes. Oh, God, There's nothing really good. super unusual about it. It just delivers a really good taste. It's got a really nice mouthfeel. Um, it's it's not non chill filter. This is nineteen years and it's like forty three percent, one hundred twenty bucks. I mean, it's a price give or take. It's going to be what. One I would say more like 140. Right. Oh, Fred, why is it Fred Fowler calling me? Show? Good collector's item though. Because this one is um is only back for a short time and then it's getting discontinued. Yeah, beautiful bottle. Yeah, well, it's hard to keep up. I mean, the 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 fervor and demand now for whiskey is so extraordinarily high that trying to put out 21-year-old and 19-year-old whiskeys on a regular basis is next to impossible. So, um I just I'm just when I see these things, cheers. I'm just happy cheers. to Glad we to get my share. hands on it. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad we finally got to come on. Well, see, the last time I sat down with Allardyce was like two years ago at Butcher's. It can't be that long. Well, I mean, he was at the social DJing, which <laughs> that was such a, ma a maddening. We we tried something different by doing a spread out event, multiple floors, and we knew that it was either going to be a great idea. That or was before it was at the Citadel, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought it was going to either be a great idea or a horrible idea, and it was so much work. That by the time the end of the night came, uh, we were too tired for an after party. But I was still happy to like sit there and the graphics and the imagery. Awesome venue. I mean, yeah. the venue was great. We just immediately outgrew it. Where I mean, was it? It was called H HSR Event Center, and we oh, we did seven hundred and forty people. And they said they've done events with a thousand people, but once you throw in s tables and stuff, it, it became totally packed right and uh, we were so exhausted by the end of the night it was just dude my feet were killing me so the citadel this year obviously uh all in one room which is a little bit more traditional for these whiskey events uh, two rooms um but that venue had this just awesome like you weren't at it i don't think uh, you would like to plan these things not around my schedule i've had sorry. a wedding yeah <laughs> sorry, say sorry i apologize if, <laughs> you'll, so so if you'll show me your schedule moving <laughs> yeah. forward I'll... we'll just compare calendars <laughs> i think i was at a wedding both times actually i i, I d d d think i recall you apologizing because you're at a wedding but yeah. uh they had floor to ceiling projector screens that covered three walls of the four of a room so you had Allardyce center stage and just these crazy graphics going, kind of wrapping around you. I, yeah. I remember seeing your like Instagram posts. And stuff. <clears throat> I mean, Snapchat it was, I thought it was fantastic record. as far as aesthetically and visually. Was, yeah. I heard really, really good things. And your, your guy that does the audio. Ian. No, no. Is it, what's his, the name of the company? I thought it was like. Oh, a, uh, Aura Systems. Uh, I think Miguel. So. Miguel, yes, he's, he's, he's awesome. Great. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, he he was incredible, and I guess him and his wife or partner just came mm -hmm. in, came out. I mean, I've worked with those guys. I've worked with Miguel specifically. Um, Med Ca Medina, right? Miguel yep. Medina, yeah, yeah. Miguel Medina, Aura Systems. Good with Nathan. Really, really good stuff. I mean, he's he, he's helped me out with gigs in Dallas. Um, obviously Houston, he's based here, but yeah, we've had. We did one recently. We did a thing called uh, Glenfiddich Cribs. Oh, I... did you see that one? No. Where that can was... I see it? First of all, on your social media. Actually, I haven't done a recap on that one yet. I've got so much footage from the last few months, and it I, awesome. I haven't sat down and edited it all. But Dallas Cribs was an idea I had just to kind of give it a slightly different uh, environment for us to get people in the industry together. Sure. And versus just going on a bar crawl and right. being in the, the, the domain that we're always in, I said, well, let's get an Airbnb, something really plush. And, so you all uh, airbnb the crib. I airbnb the crib mm. and, um, you know, filled up the fridge with beer, yeah. Topo Chico. A lot of questions I don't know about I had, that. I had, yeah. I had the whole uh, Glenfiddich range from 12 up to 26-year-old, including all the experimentals. 
um, another rum cask, you know, snacks and everything, and, and cigars, and just it was a house party. Right. But it was a small house party. It wasn't like crazy. And it know, was, yeah, and obviously... 20 people. We started off at a bar. We had lunch. We all went over to the house. And we just hung out. And people were then able to taste the whiskeys at their own pace, ask questions, hang out. It was super informal. There was no presentation. There was nothing, you know, it didn't feel like it was It was a, a branded thing. Sure. Yeah. It was just super, you know, a lot of fun. I don't know so was that, was, that was episode one was Dallas. Yeah. Um, we got to do it in Houston. I don't know if I saw, if I was reading out my really nice house when I saw David Allardyce say, I want to rent your house. I don't oh, know if I would. Fun fact, by the way, the guys who rented the house to me. Uh, Regret it. Young guys. <laughs> no, no, no. They came back the next day Solid and they, were, they sent me reviews on uh, Airbnb saying like, um, I, they couldn't believe how clean the place was when they came back. <laughs> And they actually came to, I had an event in Dallas about three weeks later. And I texted the guys, the flyer, you know, just as a courtesy. It's like, and they came out. Yeah. My Airbnb host came out to our party. <laughs> Anytime we go to Kentucky, I always, uh, it's a business trip. And, and I'll approach. Like air quote. Yeah, I mean, trip. it's it's business, <laughs> but we're going to pick out barrels of bourbon and whatever. And I always approach the Airbnb host. Always Airbnb. Airbnb is incredible, uh, especially in Kentucky. And Scotland. When we did Scotland, we stayed on Isla and we rented a like a cottage. It was cool. And it was way better than than staying in a hotel and cheaper. <laughs> um, anyway, so I always tell them like, hey, we're coming to buy bourbon. It's work related. There's six of us. We're all it's not a party, I promise. Like it's there's always like this thing <laughs> where you're trying to explain. Yeah. So I can only imagine when you approach them. The sales pitch. Yeah, did you say, Hey, I'm with what was a your elevator pitch? Well, the only thing I didn't tell them was that I was going to have the DJ set up there. Mm. I didn't tell them that. Was it very close to like but, other houses? No, it was freestanding uh, on the corner. That's good. But uh, no, I told the guys, says I'm having about 20 people over. We're doing a little kind of a thank you to people in the industry. We're going to taste all the whiskeys. Um, some of this whiskey may be left behind for you guys. Uh, but no, it was, they were fine. And like I said, I just made sure... Sure. That the guest that had stayed there before me had punched a hole in the bathroom wall. And so he showed me that and he's like, Well, this was the last group. I says, Don't worry, we won't be punching any holes in any of your yeah. walls. Well, and if everyone there is industry related, everyone's got like an obligation to not be a complete. 100%. Jerk. And also, so, it was handpicked. So, uh, you know, we invited people on a personal invitation basis. Sure. It wasn't a massive blast. Right, right. Um, so you had to you're be kind of engaged only. who it was. Yeah. It was going to yeah. be there. How yeah. many people did, you, did it hold? We had. We had probably about twenty five people at the at the at the most po- it's a solid point, crowd. but for the most part, it was probably between fifteen and twenty people. Did they all stay the night, or was it like a come and go thing? Um, I was the only one that stayed. Um, <laughs> In the whole house to yourself. Because what we did was we we decided to go for a for a drink, you know, kind of take everyone away from it. Sure. Yeah. And then a few people came back. I see. But um, that's smart. It was cool. I was actually given. Um, you know, some of the people I was, you know, kind of showing them how to DJ and stuff like that. It was, it was fun. It was it. Um, one of my friends there, Kia, who actually does know how to DJ on turntables, but she hadn't used the the equipment that we had, the, the CDJs. So we're doing a little DJ tutorial. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun. Something different, you know. That, people that are in the industry, they get so swamped with um, events and parties and whatnot and it's, it's good to try and give something a little bit different yeah. they, they also get kind of set in the routine of these things um the the account events where it, it's very like standard and you do like 50 of them a year uh, it's nice to try something different and something yep. new and um the similar idea like when we actually got the um i call it this this wasn't y'all's official calling of this but we got the uh uh, consumer launch of the IPA cask. Mm-hmm. We, when it first got here, most brands do like an actual industry only launch first, and we did an event centered around that. Partnered with a local IPA beer and yeah. did the whole thing. Um, and so we do, we do try to do things a little. I, I like the idea, and I think you really could set a trend of like doing like events at because it happens all the time with uh, networking events w- right. where they do an Airbnb, and it's those are garbage anyways. But <laughs> um, but. Doing it with a Scotch brand would, would, I mean, especially in the Heights area, or not? Uh, yeah, the Heights or River Oaks. Yeah, or, yeah. I was just thinking of the biggest house. It's all possible. about who who you invite to come. You need the right people to make yeah. that work, and also it's kind of it's, um, Michael, who's the director for the brand, uh, 
had expressed interest in the programme and suggested that maybe we roll it out or at least suggest it to the, the rest of the, the Glenferrick team. But I think it's that's a comfort level that I had with throwing that kind of part. That's a very intimate set. Sure. You, you, you know, you've got this house, you're kind of in charge of it. And it's only a handful of people. And so I don't think it's for everyone, but yeah. I especially enjoyed it because in Dallas, I know I know more people in Dallas than I do in any other market because I used yeah. to live there for 10 years. So it was a good place to kick that idea off. They should do uh, like a five-city tour with DJ Paradise. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> I, I'd specifically named it Episode 1, so alluding to the fact that, that it might, do it it might happen. Yeah. Is this the one, the video I saw where you're talking to, and it kind of... Uh, Reminded me of a, a scary movie, uh, like from the nineties. <laughs> but you're talking to a, a video camera on a on a pod, on a tri stand on a desk, and then it cuts to someone like upstairs, oh, like Maddie peeking is. around the corner, <laughs> and it's like uh, we just did that the other night. I was, I'd basically. Um, I kept expecting the phone to ring and be like, I'm in the house. You know, just like, <laughs> that, it was like this weird, creepy little like scream. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. So um, the video, where is the video? It's on my Instagram page, uh, Dave Paradise. And basically, I was just That was a plug subtle, if you weren't yeah. paying attention. <laughs> Matthias, Matthias I have like 10,000 followers. And, you know, it's whatever. Matthias and I um, became roommates recently. We moved from Chicago to Austin and we decided to go in a place. So Matty's is our Hendrix ambassador. I was about to say, is that the guy with the ponytail? No, no. that's Trevor. He's okay. our Reka ambassador. Okay. Yeah. Um, both great guys. Yeah. Very I've heard a lot of great things about Trevor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean. Like he's universally who loved, hasn't? right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't not love him. Matthias too. And he, he, he can hear me downstairs. I'm doing this video, just me and the camera, like, yeah. Having a bit of fun with it, but I was doing this video to promote this DJ mix that I just posted, and I can hear him creeping up <laughs> upstairs, and I know what he's doing, <laughs> but I don't care. And he's he's creeping down. He's got he's over the banister, and he's just getting a little side angle of me doing this video, just me <laughs> me and my camera. That was quite funny. Was we, good edit. we added that. It in. was a very good edit, yeah. And you could tell that um, based off just the first few seconds where you're talking to the camera that it wasn't planned. But it but it seemed funny enough that you just, you just threw it in. I was yeah. I was just in hysterics at myself. I was like, this is just so ridiculous, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let Danielle, get, we need to get Danielle on and one or to do a podcast? A video. But video. You, you're not based uh in Dallas anymore, right? So No, I'm in Austin now. Okay, okay. For some reason I thought that Dallas, I, Chicago, now Austin. Okay. The Chicago thing is what I thought you were back up there. Yeah, no, three years there. I loved it, amazing city. Um but Too cold. I wanted to come back to Texas. Dallas and Austin are aren't they pretty similar weather wise? No, yeah. I think Chicago's too cold. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Chicago's definitely too cold. Let me get more of that uh, uh, yeah, fire and cane. We've already covered everything, right? We have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't cover the IPA twelve, but I'm, I think you're familiar. I'm very familiar. Yeah. I definitely want a piece of that fire and cane again. So a lot of people <laughs> asked me when we first launched this, they're like, "Is that a cinnamon scotch?" I was like, "What?" Yeah. And then I didn't put two. To, I was like, "Fire." Did you tell them to leave you alone? You say oh. the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fire and cane was. <laughs> they, they tried a few different names for this for this particular release, and su- supposedly some of them were were not allowed by TTB. Some really? of them were already taken. What'd you call it? Adolf? Like, what's the what's the name? What's the name that's not allowed by the TTB? Um, I don't know. That, like, for example, um. You've got to be very careful when you put rum cask finish on oh, the whiskey. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, yeah, So yeah. that the rum isn't bigger than the, the whiskey part of it. Right, right. So that it doesn't appear to be misleading. Like the IPA one is an interesting one because if you buy this bottle in the US, it says India Pale Ale Casks. They had to actually spell it out. Everywhere else in the world that you buy this, it says IPA in massive, three, you know, the acronym. Sure. And that this is the, the madness of the, 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 the laws. Yeah, it's, Did it's, you see the new proposed regulations? So they're they're adding quite a few more in regards to brandy, more label clarification, actually defining out what barrel strength means because as you I don't know if you know, but barrel strength has no defined term. Uh, and in fact, I had someone on the show, oh, Sagamore, Sagamore Spirit Rye out of Baltimore, Maryland were here last week uh, and they had uh, mentioned that they have a barrel strength rye and it's actually – Fantastic. Like, we're huge fans of the Cast Strength Rye, but it's called Cast Strength. And they actually, he's like, Yeah, we add a little water to it. So it's it's a completely undefined term, although it would seem pretty straightforward. And the TTB's doing a, a whole slew of things in, in regards to uh, brandy, 
yeah, brandy, whiskey, the whole thing, and and the differentiation and spelling between whiskey and whiskey. So all of our regulations are spelled the way that you guys spell, mm-hmm. um, the way Scotland spells whiskey. But obviously we we spell it differently for our bourbon. But they're actually defining that now as as interchangeable. But anyways, yeah, put it in parentheses. Simple. Okay. The E. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so you uh, you go nonstop when you're in market here, right? I mean, you just basically <laughs> what are you doing after this? Um, I've got Cheryl is actually set up a, a cr- bar crawl for us tonight. So, <laughs> weren't you on one last night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Tour day you know, I'm just trying to see out the year here. Yeah. <laughs> you're about to have a month. It's off. I'm actually about to leave for uh, pretty much a month. For what? Well just a vacation? Just, um, just yeah. a break? Um, drink a lot of water Definitely, on definitely. Drink a lot of water. Definitely need it. Um, yeah, no, our jobs, is, we all enjoy it, but it's, 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 it's harder than it seems. Yeah. Well, just being on the road nonstop. Every time I have Stuart Buchanan in from um, Glendronic, he seems uh, like he just wants a pillow. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, just, just, like, need just, a just let Maybe me just, minutes. can we do the first two segments laying down and then we'll. Call um, it pillow talk. But he said he's gone like uh, something like I mean a, a, a ridiculous amount of time where he only has a couple months and he covers the world he covers Asia he covers Africa mm. well I I don't I don't remember him saying Africa but I know for sure he covers Asia and he'll go back and forth I'm oh like God how do you not and it's those tough. flights are garbage I mean they're like eighteen hour flights it's tough it's tough I mean I think I enjoy the travel aspect of it um, but. I don't have to travel more than say three hours on a on a flight, sure. versus doing the, the, go, the global. Down, right? The just global, yeah. I mean, we'll randomly go to New York and California yeah. um, here and there, but I'm I'm typically covering the central part. But yeah, doing the global role, it must be difficult time time zones and you know extremely long flights. Not only are you dealing with lack of sleep, but now you're dealing with massive time zone changes. You know, yeah. yeah. But you get to see the world, so it's. Ups and downs, right? I don't know like how everything y'all do else. It. You're always like always on. Well, and... it's not, it's not, it's not for everyone, obviously. And we've actually not had the easiest time trying to fill these roles. So there's a there's a role coming up in the company soon for a whiskey ambassador role. Um, there's other roles for which section of the nation? Uh, Central. <laughs> Central. Oh, is that yeah. what you're getting at? <laughs> it's not my role. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were about to announce that you're leaving. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's actually a position Exclusive. coming up. I'm out. I've had enough. Uh, Drop the I, mic. I, uh, bachelor's degree preferred. DJ experience uh, required. Suggested. Choice of tracksuit. Mm, questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Please submit photos of your high top shoes. <laughs> your case wins. Let's define what a high top is first. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, we have a hard time filling those roles because They're very people demanding. love the idea of it. And then when they really get down to it and they realize that how, f- how long you are gone away from home, it's very difficult. So a lot of people are just, they love the idea, but it's just... It's not good long term. It's a tough one. And you've been um, doing this... Yeah, how long have you been doing I'll be this? seven years in February. Um, but I was actually, I was pouring Glenfiddich and Balvenie part-time for a couple of years before that. So, I mean, this is... Nine years I've been talking about Glenfiddich. Sure. Um, first whiskey brand I ever worked for, first job I ever had in the industry outside of, you know, working in a kitchen, yeah. you know, years ago. But Actually, it, I'll tell you a funny story about me working in a kitchen. I could have poisoned someone, so quite, thankfully I didn't. At least I don't think don't I did. Don't eat the muffins. But, uh, yeah, please don't let this I be exhibit A, a in some kitchen. post-mortem case or something. I, I, what we say, blagged my way into a job working in a kitchen. Um, <laughs> this was when I lived in England. I was probably... 19 years old and I blagged my way into this job that I had no business having I was the head <laughs> chef I say head, head chef, chef. I, I was the head cook in a, in a restaurant that did, did like 20 covers for dinner right but the woman comes in after I've been there for about two weeks and she, she's not happy and she opens the fridge and she says come and see this and you know the, the stacking order of, of meats and sure. different things and it was just all over the place. And she's like, you don't know what you're doing, do you? I yeah, was yeah. like, nah, not really. Yeah. <laughs> like, she fire you? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. She did fire me, yeah. Um, yeah. How, how, how much time left do we have? This is the third or fourth? 
Okay, so we got one more segment after Let's this. Let's go quick. Uh, if, if it always flies by, and there's about ten different things you said, I want to I want to go back to um, because this is this is a side of you I haven't really seen. You know, of being fired the as a side. the poisoning <laughs> oh, side, and uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> when you said just for clarification, when you say stacking order, you mean like oldest meat goes on is the most. Well, red meat would be on the on the deck, okay, or on on the lower part of the fridge because it potentially could drip blood, sure, right? Sure. And so there's just this, you know, whole stacking et- etiquette or safety uh, in in certain, you know, restaurants or certain kitchens, should I say? Sure. And I did not adhere to that. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd and you put so, it? Just blood everywhere. I, was just, <laughs> no, I mean, it was just like there might have been prawns down below and beef up top. I don't know. Didn't know what I was doing. Nineteen years old. For those who don't you know, you were eighteen. Nineteen means 19. shrimp. <laughs> I was just trying to. I was just trying to make some money. So. um uh, I'm trying to go go back to. Uh, oh, I've had some horrible jobs, by the way, really terrible jobs. <clears throat> this one's pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, you get to. I, I work in aviation, and and it gives me a lot of d- computer time, which allows me to do my other hobbies, like a radio <laughs> podcast, and and you haven't slept, and I haven't slept. I worked mids last night, so or night shift last night. So, um, we. Uh, not all the pistons are firing, but you said that uh, a job was coming up. I wanted to ask you specifically, um, and we've talked about this recently with Spring. No, no, no. What's the, what's the, how does someone get into the industry? This question has come up a lot. People have asked, you know, like, how do you meet uh, these people? I was like, well, actually, it all started because I just hounded these people on night shift trying to find their emails and, like, what, who I need to talk to. And then I just begged them to come to my event. Um, there's, it's not, you, you don't start out knowing anybody until you know people. Right. So um, I know that there are some job websites specifically for industry folks, but if someone wanted to get into the industry that didn't know someone who knew someone, what would be the way to go about doing that? I would say the number one thing would be probably BevForce. Just applying, that's kind of what you're alluding to. There's like websites that are specific, specifically just in Bev our... Force, B-E-V for those dot curious. Com. Yeah, yeah. Dot com. Um, and it says, it tells you what do you want to do, sales, marketing, all that. And then you can kind of apply. It's like a LinkedIn just for our industry. Sure, sure. So that's a really good resource. I think... Cheers. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone kind of has a, di- a different background coming into this business. Like for me, I worked at the distributor and then for a marketing company. And now I work for William Grant. You almost killed people at a restaurant, and then, <laughs> and then we almost, hired you. Almost, almost, almost. For me, Facebook is largely family and whiskey, and and oftentimes mitigating the the issues that rise from forty five hundred member group. Um, whiskey is like a big part of my Facebook experience. When he first started jumping in and being like on Facebook every day, and you fall prey to politics, and um, yeah, it comes up. <laughs> Yeah, so at the at the cigar lounge we go to, we've had both left and right guys get together for bottle shares, and there was never a single issue, never a single problem. Guys would get together. This guy voted for Hillary. This guy, we, we there was even a regular that's a lobbyist at uh, in D.C. that would come to these events, and never a problem. Yeah. Everyone understood each other in person, and on Facebook it became this. Political thing. It was around the time that Trump started running, you know, like Gene became like a, a big focus on the, the, but he's since kind of reeled back on that a little bit. And uh, I think, I think that's kind of like the, it's like when you first start drinking whiskey, you try everything, then you kind of move up and proof. Then you get those, pr- we've talked about this too, proof. I don't want to say proof whores, but, but <laughs> the, the people who love, sure. yeah, the people who only drink sherry bombs at cash strength. Mm-hmm. We've talked about that. Yeah. And then they eventually moved back to, you know, normal stuff. And I caught Gene in that one time. But I'm rambling a bit. But the point is, is that um, it, it's a. I think it's a a, a scale or a, a stepping process. You you get into Facebook. You get into politics. You get rid of politics. Sometimes you get rid yeah. of your Facebook. Then you you know like you go through stages. And uh, but Gene's a, a phenomenal guy. I keep trying to get him on, but he's also that one of those guys. An that, interesting episode. It would be an incredible episode. Yeah. He's a uh, he owns a pressure washing company and they do everything at night. Oh. So when you come and you see a Chick Fil A parking lot looking gorgeous, it's because they did it at three a.m. So um, I'm gonna drop my car off at Chick Fil A one night. <laughs> just that. See if we can just get so we can get a little fresh up. <laughs> so uh, Gene's a great guy. But uh, anyways, we've got like what ten minutes? About five minutes, About five minutes left. Um, what would be? 
We didn't even cover the 12, which is like the classic well, 12. You know, I, I, thought, I thought it would be a good idea to, to have the 12-year-old here. It is definitely our most well-known. It represents about 85% of our business wow. for, for the brand. Uh, let's not ignore the fact that it's a 12-year-old single malt. And it's 12 years old, yeah. And, it, and let's not ignore the fact that it has never disappeared. It stayed. These are things, these are no-age statement whiskies, these three. That gives the team um, a bit more flexibility to create different products, different price points, using different parts of our stock model. Um, the 12-year-old has never been taken away. So we have the age statements all the time. Yeah, 12, 14, 15, 18, 18 still there. Yeah. 21. 21, that rum that rum finishes. And, uh, dude, that was the most memorable event I've been to with you. Even, forget the social. Um, you brought a, uh, did a deconstruction of the 21. 21 that yeah. was just oh, yeah, incredible. Oh yeah, that was like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That moment. We did, uh, we tasted the 21 year old at cast strength, which was 21 years old before it goes into the rum cask. Sure. So bourbon cask aged. We tasted the rum that we used to season the casks, yeah. which was also cast strength. And then we tasted um, the final product. Yeah. Which was like. And it was awesome. And we butter. paired it with Alec Bradley cigars and it was a good time. Alec Bradley cigars. <laughs> Alec Bradley in the house. Alan Rubin is a, uh, Good friend. I'm sure he'll be watching at some point. <laughs> well, it depends. I, I'm not friends <laughs> with him on Facebook yet. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll send it to him. We'll connect you up. But yeah, let's uh, let's go back to where yeah. it all started. 12-year-old is a combination of bourbon cast and sherry cast. This was traditionally what Glenfiddich was built on. 12, 15, 18-year-olds. All very similar in how they're produced in terms of the maturation. So you've got um, 85% roughly of this is bourbon cask, 12-year-olds. And about the, the last 15% is 12-year-old sherry casks. Um, oh, we're also sherry is what we're using. A bit drier. I didn't Did know. I not pour myself one? That's really yeah. terrible. I didn't know it was... Uh, <laughs> I, I definitely am I'm, I'm needing a nap, I think. <laughs> but yeah... Uh, we keep Stuart's pillow behind the <laughs> the wall here. This is a great dram. Um, a lot of people overlook it because it's so obvious and it's it's so, you know, available. People want to go for the slightly more rare stuff, but this is um, still the best-selling single malt in the world for good reason. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good dram. Um, really, my preference is a tiny splash of water, especially in this one. It just kind of gives it a little bit more of that sweetness. Take a word for it. Cheers. Oh, Cheers, absolutely. Guys. I must tap again. <laughs> You know that's that college instinct mm -hmm. that uh, that's the, ingrained in your DNA. DNA. <laughs> yeah, I never know when when to do it, when not to do I, it. I, I, I <laughs> don't I don't do it usually with stemware because I don't think about it, and my pinky is already out. <laughs> um, but with Glencairns or with uh, Rocks Glass, and I, without even thinking about rocks it, it's always always cheers, it. tap, and then eye contact and go. So yeah, this this is um, this is something that's been around since about. The 1960s, the early 1960s was when we really started selling Glenfiddich um, or exporting it outside of Scotland. And it was an eight, it was a no age statement to begin with. Then it became an eight year old, and then um, later on we we upped it to twelve years. We grew up. The second year of the social, we had I found some old vintage bottles of mm. uh, online. I had to buy at auction, get them over there, good. bring them in, and they. Uh, they had the, the all reflective labeling in the tube, so it was like this old shiny, you know. Um, but the old bottles were were fun, mm -hmm. and it's all it's always great to kind of taste what it used to be, you know, compared to what it is now. And it's it's fantastic. I mean, twelve yeah. years you can't really go wrong. And I think if I'm not mistaken, thirty bucks, thirty five bucks. Uh, closer to forty, but yeah. just depends. Just I mean, depends. Just depends where you're shopping. Sure. They actually still have all at the bottling facility in uh, at the Glenfiddich Distillery. They actually have all the past bottles, and it's crazy to see how much <laughs> really has changed. The archive. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a package refresh next year, I believe. Oh, really? Um, For all of them, the core range. It's, it, it'll take a bit of time to get through the whole range, but um, eighteen included, even though they just did that uh, repackaging. Well, it'll, it will be, yeah, eventually. I believe it'll be possibly twelve and fifteen first. Yeah. But yes, um, they're busy over there. The global, the global team. They're always up to something, and they're they're doing some amazing work. Um, Glenn Ferrick has just been turned around in the last, you know, I would say, seven or eight years 
in terms of what the distillery offers and the the, the perception of the brand and oh, the it's, offerings. It's... Remember, Snow Phoenix was 2010. Oh, God. Was the so first... many people ask me if they can get a bottle of Snow Phoenix. Yeah, it's the most requested Glenfiddich I've ever it's known. Not... <sighs> And it was a limited edition in 2010, yeah, you know. The Jesse the, Wood story about Snow Phoenix. Oh, man. Convinced his wife to buy two cases. And now it's like, he's, good man, Jesse, well done. <laughs> yeah. It's, but uh, yeah. Is it, I mean, tell the story behind that. that it can't the Snow back, Phoenix? Right? Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a special edition created out of um, a, a, a disaster. mini disaster. <laughs> um, okay. It's a little bit strong. <laughs> Uh, there was some roofs collapsed under the snowfall and um, some of the casts were exposed to snow for a few days and some genius came up with the idea. So said, this is an opportunity. We Reborn should, of the... We should call this the Snow Phoenix. Um, so it came, it came together fairly quickly. We, the whiskies were... It was an amalgamation, a marriage of different casts from different ages and it was bottled at 47.8, I believe. Uh, it was non-chill filtered. So this was kind of like the kickstart for a lot of the limited editions that would come from the distillery after that. But that was back in 2010. Um, and now we've just got, you know, we've got more bottle. Like at one point the sales team were saying, oh, all the innovations coming through Bovenny, we need more innovation with sure. Glenfiddich. And now they're like, stop yeah, too yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't win. It's hard to strike a balance, but. You guys, I mean, you could recreate that. You could simply build a, a, a warehouse with a roof out of Legos that, that has like a, a load bearing weight of like a hundred pounds of snow. And then, It'll eventually cave in, and I mean, it was very well received. Move. I know, I know, and it's probably a hell of Price. expensive. Yeah. So, um, I think we've seen enough disasters recently. Yeah, in yeah. 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 Uh, oh yeah, we've got a barrel dropping from Bardstown this weekend because of uh, it was the it was the week after 1792 collapse, and uh, it was the warehouse right next to it. So uh, it's an easy sales pitch. We'll see how that goes. But um, how yeah. many barrels does that put you at? Oh, the group. Um, we we picked thirty this year. We've picked this year. This this year, twenty eighteen. The group has picked thirty, and um, like ten of them have dropped. We're still waiting on Dox's rum barrel. That's gonna um, be it's exciting. gonna be awesome. Teeling Irish whiskey barrels. Uh, we we do. I wanted to see twenty this year, and we picked thirty this That's year. Exciting. So, um, and our last one sold out in. Under an hour, so uh, pretty good. Sp speaking of docs, uh, oh, docs a troll. <laughs> yeah, he's been trolling me on Facebook. Yeah, recently. He, oh, he, oh no, no, that's just the timer. I mean, it's still going, right? We should probably wrap it up. Is your whole point? But yeah. um, docs is uh, king troll. He's awesome. And I turned his little olive thing into a gift, and I'm going to be using it. Yeah, every he possible turn all, he always gives me a hard time for drinking dirty martinis he's like do you know how gross it is and i was like no and i don't want to know <laughs> yeah, exactly. just don't tell me. you should don't say yeah it is gross that's why i don't use citadel hey <laughs> oh, all right so <laughs> thanks so much for coming on the show guys yes, i appreciate awesome. it thank you I, i'm so glad this finally happened yeah, and uh it's nice to be on this side yeah usually you, i'm sitting back there i'm like oh god what are they saying yeah yeah <laughs> well rain it in this one for sure we're gonna have to clean some edits out but um Thanks so much for coming, guys. Cheers. One last time. Cheers. And I'll now you have to drink to this one. all that. Yeah, yeah.